I want to see a woman president soon, but not her. She's a disaster. Christianity, it's under siege. Other religions, frankly, they're banding together. The country has to do that around Christianity. Who has read The Art of the Deal in this room? Everybody. I always say, I always say, a deep, deep second to the Bible. The Bible is the best, the Bible. That was Donald Trump speaking today at Liberty University in Virginia, and that's where we would like to begin today's roundtable. Joining us right now, communication strategist for Citizens for Self-Governance, Tamara Colbert. Also joining us, Rick Unger, host of Steel and Unger on Sirius XM POTUS Channel 124. And you know I never miss a show every Saturday, Rick. <laughs> All right. Good to have you both <laughs> with us. All right, Tamara. Let's start with you. Uh, Trump caught a little flack today for flubbing a Bible verse at the beginning of his speech. Maybe you caught that saying 2 Corinthians instead of 2 Corinthians. Uh, Tamara, do you think he'll be forgiven for this flub? Really? If they can forgive Hillary for um, all of her emails, I'm sure they can forgive Donald Trump for flubbing second corinthians i mean isn't that the christian uh, way we should forgive right. i mean Turn he's right cheek. that's <laughs> right that's right rick uh i, I, I don't love... think anybody nobody over at liberty university was being particularly forgiving of hillary i don't think but just you know uh will they forgive him yeah but i mean it's kind of funny does anybody believe that the bible is donald trump's favorite book yeah, well, I mean, I don't it's, see any it's, hands it's second to the Bible. We'll get to that in just a moment. But uh, <laughs> Rick Trump also said Christians need to band together like other religions seem to do. And immediately I, I looked at John and like like Catholics and Protestants and yeah. Sunnis and Shias. Uh, mm. What How was your reaction to that? I, you know, whenever I hear that from anybody, it makes me very nervous. Now, maybe it's because I'm Jewish and that leaves me <laughs> out. Point. But you know what? It also leaves out Ivanka Trump and, and her husband, who is an Orthodox Jew. So I don't know. You know, he goes to these places and he says what the people want to hear. And I guess that's what you do when you're a politician. But I guess what's kind of wearing on me is can we now stop saying that Donald Trump is not a politician? Doesn't that kind of make the point? Well, I think he would say he's make, trying to make a deal, uh, Rick. But uh, let, Tamara, yeah. I, I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to, to take a look um, because for the first time, I think, in the history of this campaign, uh, Trump faced some boos out there, at least from people who normally had been supporting him. Let's take a listen. Uh, here he was hitting Ted Cruz in South Carolina where a lot of Tea Party supporters were there to listen to him speak. Take a listen. And he's a very nice guy, but you give him. You have to get, right? <laughs> You have to get, well, excuse me, excuse me. He didn't report his bank loans, excuse me. Didn't report his bank loans. Say whatever you want. He didn't report bank loans, so it's okay. All right, so uh, that was the first time I think we can remember in recent memory where Trump uh, did not do very well with the crowd. This was the South, Part or South Carolina Tea Party Coalition. Tamara, you've been, a su you've been a supporter of Trump throughout the campaign. Were you somewhat surprised to hear those boos? Well, I'm a supporter of a lot of candidates and haven't put my eggs in one basket yet, but I think every candidate, you, there's no way that you can please everybody. I think what's gr really grating with people is when Trump is going on the offense and, and, and saying certain things about candidates, when the Tea Party group in particular in South Carolina, they're looking for real solutions. And so I think Trump is going to have to pony up some of those solutions as we uh, start the serious vetting with the caucuses coming up. Rick, do you think that this is going to help him at all? Because he had some pretty harsh comments to say about Ted Cruz, calling him well, nasty. I mean, very different, different tone. Well, exactly. From that's what's, thank you. That's what's so confusing because just this morning or, or yesterday, he was telling us that nobody likes him once they get to know him. And, and Ted's a nasty guy and all that stuff. And then today in making the speech, he says, you know, he's a pretty nice guy. Uh, but he didn't file the proper returns. He's, you know, he just talks off of his cuff, which is, I suppose, charming in some respects, but you're going to get things wrong when you do that. And John, he was booed during the debate, so it's not the first yeah, time. Yeah, you're right. But he was talking, he was in referencing rallies. Right? Yeah, you know, when you have a rally, it's a little bit different. They show up to actually hear one guy speak. When you have a debate, well, they're there to hear everybody speak, so you would think there's some... Especially when he only lets his supporters into the rally as a rule. 
Yeah, yeah true. we have to sign that loyalty oath. Uh, Tamara, you know. I, you want to go back to the Bible thing? Because I, I have to get the reaction <laughs> to that because. The uh, Bible verse. Yeah, yeah we, we, I, I have to know, Tamara, what, what did you think about it? Because you heard him. Trump compared his book, The Art of the Deal, to the Bible, saying it's a deep second. His book, not the Bible. Uh, is that. Actually, let's, that let, let's take a to listen me? to it. We you, can you we got get it? the reaction. Okay. The Art of the Deal. Everybody read The Art of the Deal. Who has read The Art of the Deal in this room? Everybody. I always say. <laughs> I always say, a deep, deep second to the Bible. The Bible is the best, the Bible. The Bible blows it away. That's not yeah, I'm kind of cringing. Uh, what was your reaction when you heard that? It's Ooh. cringeworthy because I think, you know, we all know that Trump does not profess his Christianity openly. And it's obviously <laughs> um, apparent that he does not uh, know the inside buzzwords from the Christian perspective. Right. I felt like the crowd was was very polite, as you would expect from Liberty yes, University students. There you go. Some They're uncomfortable very laughs. -like. Well, they, would have, they would have been fined ten dollars if they weren't. That's right. He, he also referenced the record crowd and donated that, or honored Martin Luther King with that, even right. though most of the students right. had and, and to be. You know, there. the ten dollars thing is for real. If somebody at Liberty University does not come to an event like that, they are fined right. ten dollars. It's it's compulsory. Wow. They have yeah. to be there. So that might explain the large crowd. Well, Damn. Stick around, guys, that we have to go to a commercial break. But when we come back, we're going to talk about that Democratic presidential debate. Uh, they're, not, they're not nice anymore. They're getting a little ugly. So we're going to discuss that. I have supported from day one an instant background check. He voted for what we call the Charleston loophole. My proposal provide health care to all people. We have the Affordable Care Act. There are things we can do to improve it, but to tear it up and start over again. No one is tearing this up. We're going to go forward. Yeah, that was Sunday night's Democratic debate. A lot more heated than previous debates. The gloves came off, the claws came out. Sanders threw some punches at Hillary Clinton, but did Hillary feel the burn from Sanders. You just couldn't resist yourself, could you? I could Joining us I for the Roundtable, communication strategist for Citizens for Self-Governance, Tamara Colbert, and senior political contributor at Forbes.com, Rick Unger. Uh, Rick, the Democratic candidates threw some passive shots at Trump and the Republican field as a whole, but most of their attacks were focused on each other. Mm -hmm. And it's going to get even uglier. The winner is going to emerge badly bruised, and that might not be the best thing. Well, I'm not sure I agree, John. I don't think the winner, assuming that Hillary will be the winner, I don't think she emerges that badly bruised. She's going to have a hard electoral uh, run of things getting through New Hampshire. But after that, you know, Bernie kind of runs into a brick wall once you get down to South Carolina, throughout the South, and into the SEC primaries. So I don't think that Hillary's problems are not Bernie. Hillary's problem is what the FBI is doing right now. Well, Tamara, hmm. Tamara health care was one of the big issues that I think revealed the most about what we can expect from Sanders and Clinton until the nomination is settled. Both very passionate. Uh, but we also learned about how popular President Obama is among Democrats. And I guess, according to their inside polls, among Democratic voters, if Hillary does, in fact, win, do you think she'll bring up President Obama as much? She brought him up quite a bit during the general yeah. election. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the one thing that became really clear uh, uh, during the debates was the fact that Hillary has vowed to continue Obama's failed policies. So that will be the one thing we can count on if she is the Democrat nominee. Well, let's keep in mind what she respond to that. Let's, yeah, let's keep in mind what she was really doing last night. She was speaking primarily to South Carolina last night. You know, being wrapping yourself up in Obama, which she clearly did, is of some value in Iowa, not huge, of little value in New Hampshire, of great value in South Carolina. Hillary's already playing her plan B, plan C. Right. She knows what I just said. It's all about South Carolina. If she were to meet a catastrophe in South Carolina, now we've got something to talk about. Yeah. All right, let's talk about gun control because, as you know, Hillary's been aligning herself with the president, saying that, you know, she supports his position. But it seemed like Bernie Sanders kind of changed his position a little bit on gun control. Did you notice that, Tamara? I actually think these guys are trying. I think Bernie is actually coming a little bit more to the middle. I think Bernie is trying to differentiate himself from Hillary because Hillary is taking such a hard line stance to not just support Obama's gun legislation and his uh, focus on confiscation of guns, but she wants to even kick his up a notch. And I think Bernie is having to divest himself 
from Hillary in that capacity. Rick, what yeah, do you but, think? Yeah, I mean, Bernie's problem is not that he has to get to the middle. Bernie's problem is on guns. He has to get to the left because he has supported some NRA measures. Now, Hillary does overstate it. Bernie's telling the truth when he says that he has a D minus <clears throat> rating right. from the NRA. So it's obviously not like he's doing their bidding. But he did register a few votes. Remember, he comes from a very rural state mm -hmm. where a lot of people have guns. So, right. no, he's not trying to get to the center. He's trying to get back over to the left where he wants to be. Tamara, at one point, uh, Sanders referred to Donald Trump as his good friend. CNN likened Sanders to Donald Trump, saying their tone of anger is similar. Do you agree with that? I, I absolutely do. Both Bernie Sanders' surge is because the American people are upset with the status quo in Washington. It's exactly why <clears throat> Trump is resonating. And I think in an odd, strange way, Trump and Sanders are really tapping into something uh, that's going on in America. Yeah, I think you're right about that. I Rick. think Tamara's right about that. The difference is, is that Bernie doesn't insult people personally the way Donald Trump does. I, well, I think he's getting very close to uh, insulting Hillary Clinton personally. He <laughs> close, came so but close he's not during there. the debate. You think so? He, he made he's like that pledge. He's never run a negative ad in, in any of his elections, and I, I'm just waiting for you know this has been an election of first. I'm just waiting for the first time Bernie Sanders comes out because mm -hmm. you know inside his campaign they can they can almost smell the blood. They want they want to pass. I, you're probably right, John, but I'll bet you he's not going to make fun of what she looks like, like Donald no, Trump has done. No, no, I don't think he'll, he'll go there. Uh, but this, this has been very fascinating over the last week or so, trying to watch Hillary Clinton outflake Bernie Sanders from the left, trying to drive a wedge between him and President Obama on any possible issues. Right. Um, it looks like the Hillary Clinton camp has finally awakened. The force has awakened within <laughs> yeah. the Hillary camp. I so love it. They've always been awake. It's no, no way, I like the Star Wars they, I don't think they, I, you good. know, you and I disagree with, on this, Rick, but I don't think that she was taking Bernie Sanders personally, and I think Bill Clinton finally got in her ear and said, well, actually, Honey. we don't, we don't disagree that much. I think you make a fair point. I think in the beginning, a few months back, she wasn't, and I, I do agree with you that she's forced to take him more seriously now. Absolutely. Yeah. So, that's right. Yeah. It looks good. Tamara, Rick, thanks so much. Great conversation, you guys. Look forward to another one. You guys. Have a great week. All right, just out of Newsmax now, a special American moment taking a look at the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And we want to hear from you about Sean Penn's 60 Minutes interview. What do you think?